Shalom. Today we are continuing our seminar called The Biblical Feast as Key Points in Building of the Relationship Between God and Man. In the previous lesson we talked about the Feast of Passover, Pesach. This feast is symbolizing the exodus from the slavery. We talked about the fact that due to the, the sacrifice of the lamb, the children of Israel left Egyptian slavery. We also said that due to the sacrifice of Yeshua as the Lamb of God, God has delivered us from the slavery of sin. This feast is symbolizing the, the beginning point of our relationship of God and man. Because when we receive the sacrifice of Yeshua as the Lamb of God, as our personal Savior, when we repent of our own sins, when we decide to follow God, the same moment we get the freedom of choice, the freedom of choice to leave the sin behind in order to start building our relationship with God and fulfill His will. This is the freedom of choice that is symbolized by the Feast of Passover, Pesach. Today we will continue talking about the same feast and we will continue to talk a little bit more about the way how we can build our relationship with God from the beginning point. We'll, we'll discuss this word, Exodus 12, verse 3 and the fourth verse. Tell the whole community of Israel that on the tenth day of this month each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. So, every Israeli in Egypt needed to participate in this meal, to, take, to eat this lamb. What does it tell us? It tells us of the fact that each person who decides to follow the lamb through Yeshua's lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, must have a personal relationship with, with God. We can't get to paradise on somebody's shoulders. We must build our relationship, personal relationship with God the Father, His Son, Yeshua the Messiah. The next verse, number five. The animals you choose must be a year old males without defect and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. It tells us here about the character of the lamb. We know that our lamb, didn't, Yeshua the Messiah, didn't have any sin. He had a humble character. He, was, he wasn't fulfilling his own will. He said that he came to fulfill God's will, his Father's will. Whatever God, said, God the Father said, he did. We must understand that when we want to follow God and, and to fulfill his will and build our relationship with him, we must become like Yeshua the Messiah in his character. As it says in Matthew 11, Take your burden upon me and learn from me, for I am humble and contrite in heart, and you will find rest for your weary souls. We must develop the humility to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, to learn to do His will according to His word and in accordance with the relationship or uh, according to the, uh, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The next verse. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. We see that after the lamb had been taken to the Israeli homes, it was kept there in the houses of the Israelis in Egypt for three and a half days. We know also that our lamb, Yeshua, Yeshua God's lamb, was serving the people of Israel for three and a half years. What does it tell us in building our relationship with God? It tells us that our relationship must not be a one-time relationship. It must be permanent. We must increase in our relationship and get them deeper. It's not like today we're building a relationship and tomorrow we're doing something else. It's very important, the, the consistency in building our relationship with God the Father and His Son, Yeshua the Messiah. Verse 7. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. So we know that the blood of the lamb that was slaughtered in Egypt was keeping the Israelis from death. 
the destroying angel was passing Egypt that night and was striking the Egyptian firstborn. The houses that had the blood of the lamb were protected and the destroying angel couldn't enter the, those houses. What does it tell us? It's very important that the blood of Yeshua's lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, God's lamb, would guard our hearts and minds, our spirit, soul and body. It's important. It's very important to declare this blood in our life and to always remember that when we make our covenant with God and decide to follow God's Lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, we connect to Him through the, His death in order to live with Him through His resurrection. So it's very important for us to die to anything that contradicts uh, His will and that the blood of Yeshua would always cover our life. Verse number 8, that same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. We see here that the Lamb, God's Lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, died for our sins. He died for us as sinners. And that's why it's always very important for us to remember the deep pit the Lord has taken us out of through the blood of Yeshua the Messiah, God's Lamb, in order not to return to that pit and in order not to leave behind, leave what, what God has given us through Yeshua the Messiah. The next verse, verse 9 and 10. Do not eat the meat raw or boiled in water, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs and internal organs. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some of it is left till morning, you must burn it. So, the lamb should have been eaten the whole. The whole, the whole lamb, his head, his, his body, whole body, his legs and everything and all his inner parts. We also see it needed to be eaten whole. Even if you didn't like something, you needed to eat it. For example, me personally, I don't like to eat inner parts of the animals or its head. But based on the word here, what it says here, it tells us to eat it whole. It tells us here that we must eat the whole lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, and to build our relationship with him in all the aspects of our lives. Not only in the things that we like, the blessings, God's love, but also in the things we don't like, what our flesh doesn't like. It could be some difficulties, it could be some trials in our life, it could be some, some pain that we must go through. We must understand that everything that is offered by Yeshua the Messiah, the Lamb of God, must be the part of our life. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste, it is the Lord's Passover. We know that after the Israelis in Egypt had eaten the, the Lamb of God, in, the, the Lamb in Egypt, and after the blood of the Lamb has kept them, they must have followed the Lamb in the desert. They, and, and, and then they came to the, the Mount Sinai. They were going towards God in order to start building a relationship with Him. And, and after that, they entered the God's promised land after 40 years. We understand that when we make a covenant with God, when we decide to follow our Lamb, God's Lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, when we repent of our sins, when we receive Him as our own personal Savior, when we decide to follow Him, it's very important to understand that we must be ready in order to follow Him immediately, to fulfill His will the way He likes, the way He desires. That's why we need to be ready to fulfill God's will and follow Him. Let us look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. The life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you that what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Yeshua, the, the Messiah. When we decide to follow God, through the repentance, through receiving the blood, of the, the God's Lamb, Yeshua, the Messiah, it's, was, it's very important for us to remember that God is leading us in building our relationship with God the Father, His Son, Yeshua, the Messiah. We must be ready to build our relationship with Him. We must be steady and consistent and grow in our building our relationship with Him. And now, Exodus chapter 12, verse 11 to 14. 
On the same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is the day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. Here, God is showing us the difference between those who have the, the Lamb of God and those who don't have the Lamb of God. The Israeli, Israelites who had the blood of the Lamb upon their door frames, they, was, they were rescued. They were led to the promised land in order to start building a relationship with God. We, all those who have God's Lamb, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord has given us the freedom of choice in order to leave this, this slavery, the slavery of sin, and in order to enter the promised land, God's kingdom, and to build our relationship with God the Father and His Son, Yeshua the Messiah. Those who have the blood of the Lamb upon their hearts, upon their lives, those, are, those people are protected from the God's judgment that God is sending upon the people, those who don't have the sacrifice. It's very important to remember that this precious blood of, uh, of the precious lamb is the thing that gives us salvation, the protection and the ability to build our relationship with God the Father and His Son Yeshua the Messiah. May God bless you, you and us on this journey. Next lesson we will be talking about the next key point in building our relationship with God and man, the Feast of the Unleavened Bread.